That is definitely not a Nissan subframe. Like, I don't know what's beyond this. This is amazing. This might be my favorite car on the day. <laughs> Grandstands is the spectator parking. FD, S15, there's a 34 GTR we'll buy, a couple Evos, good stuff. Got a few minutes before track goes live. A little parking lot cars. Nice R34 GTR. Nice S15, wide body, little FD, SSR type C's, E46. E46, E46 is on TEs, is so good. Evo 5.6, more Evo goodness, my word, that's nice. T37Vs next to a DV6 Integra. This is the four-door Type R, basically. And a converted Miata. So the paddock area, or the pit area, is not open to the general public until 10.30 after they do the first session of super laps. So we're on the outside until then, because your boy is just a, still a regular person. <laughs> Not on the inside yet. So to give you an idea of how far things have come, this is the turbo class. And the slowest turbo class car is, has a best time of 58.9 seconds. So they're not even messing around with the one minute barrier. They're all below it. And looking to crack into the 40s. And then the NA class as well. Like a 101 is the slowest in a car so these guys have gotten super fast over the years but these are just all the different classes running today k car class the exhibition class real tuning class which is like a more street not crazy uh, arrow or anything like that allowed radial tire class drop tuning car class under 29 so drivers under 30 years old in a class and then the big boys is the turbo so the turbo and the in a class are the real like full-on unlimited cars <laughs> Trust GR86 that we saw at Tokyo Auto Salon. Now putting in work at the track. <laughs> Trust GR86 just crashed on, in the you know infield there. See when it comes around. Seems like it just hit the rear. It drove back into the pits and they're checking it out. So must be not too bad.
unfortunately the blue AK9 that just went by stopped out on track but giving me an opportunity to switch grandstands first time here at scuba so just really exploring everywhere so this will put me at the final hairpin before the front straight it's cold my goodness the sun breaks through it might warm up a little bit but it is definitely a chilly chilly start to the day There's two Lancia Deltas registered. They're not drifting over there. That's the Lancia Delta just blew out a ton of smoke. Seems like it was a pretty big oil down. We got a big wave of oil smoke coming up our way. So things are shut down for a minute while they check everything out. Ooh, just to stay moving and warm up a little bit, let's go check out some parking lot cars while we wait for them to clean up the track. Man, it is chilly today. Whoa, 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 look at this guy. Here we go. Black, it's so good to see a non-white Integra Type R. Look at that guy there. Woo! The meaty fitment. Honda racing on the tires as per the style. Wide mounted wing, which is how you do it. And this is what really caught my eye. Very cool. I don't even know what that is, but Longshans are good, man. And the rears look to be like equipped Mark 1s, maybe. Mark 2s. Jeez, how good is that FC? Time capsule, that is like period correct in all senses. Good Z33. Those exhaust tips look like the, was it Sakram? I don't know, Katakana Sakram, it's like a really expensive exhaust system, but apparently it makes your Z sound a little better than a VQ. Nice full on BRZ wing in the back and it's part of the same celeb or cleave or however you pronounce it who's running in the event fd needs a little paintwork and look at this big guy jzx 110 mark ii look at that vent my word good little grouping fd fd bmw skyline 33 two-door Drifty type setup, looking good. Another Z33. You don't need much. Front bumper I don't recognize. Got a little interesting profile to it. Is that FC oil cooler up front there? <laughs> Still being used as the go-to oil cooler. Yes. Good group of DC5 Integra type bars here. Nice fitment, a little meaty style. Oh, that's a what, CL1? What? Torneo? 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 Love it. Oh, Sea West front bumper. There you go. Something different. That's kind of cool. EP3, Civic Type R. Man. And FD2, Civic Type R, it looks like. Heck yeah. 
Yeah, just a good old Evo 8, Evo 9. Check out this 180 SX down on the end. That looks like Garage Mac front bumper. Garage Mac hood, maybe. Oh, jeez, was it like, I don't know, Koguchi fenders with added vents on them? On CR Kai's, which long time love. And then looks like Garage Mac overs with additional overs on them. This thing is wild. I like the no wing, no spoiler look. S15 dash with the carbon overlay and running Motec. My word, that is wild. Look at that guy. Beautifully simple S15 down here on the end. It says Alltech version on the side, so NA motor. That makes like, what, like 200 horsepower, or something like that, 190. Different cams, different ECU on the Alltech version. Almost wild speed Evo. The parking lot proving to be a good distraction while they're cleaning up the track. Car events pull car owners to them that have cool cars. Turbo class is out now. The exciting cars, just because they make cool sounds. Yes, that's an ER34 Skyline sedan. All the super laps from the morning session are finished. So like free runs during the middle of the day and then there's another, there's some insane cars. And then there'll be another session of uh, super laps in the afternoon.
Tech A80 Supras might be my new favorite thing. In like stock form or on the street, they, they just look big and kind of blobby. I'm gonna get some hate for that. But like big aero time attack spec, really cool, really exciting. and. They make some really good noises. Now the A paddock is open where all the cars are on the inside, kind of infield of the track. And then that grandstand bleachers there, that is for the inner hairpin. Uh, so I'd like to end up over there. Another cool thing about this event was so many cars and they're lapping the track in 55 seconds to a minute-ish, you know? The, the pace of the cars coming around is really high. Like they'll put three or four cars out on track for a group. They do the runs, boom, next group goes out, boom. So it's just like cars going by, going by, going by. Uh, it's got a really good pace unless, you know, mechanical failure or whatever. Look at this big daddy, good grief. D's Cafe, D's Garage with, look at that. D's Racing Cafe Garage has their own wheels. Right now, Woo. let's get a look at some of the stuff. Oh, there we go. There we go. Admix GTR. Up, Woo. Up close to personal. What an RB setup there. Looks like it's still on stock coils, which is interesting. Maybe not. Stock looking connectors, anyway. Love this arrow. Little mesh in the wheel wells. Big throttle body, nice search tank. Man, I guess maybe aftermarket coils, but stock crank angle sensor is interesting. And we are not going to suck up birds, but you know, everything else is okay. Look at that flat bottomy set up there. Quite a few people here in the paddock checking stuff out. Really, really neat. Oh, here we go. The Tenemans GTR. This thing has been coming together feverishly on Instagram. Beautiful, beautiful GTR as well. It's funny how everyone has like their own take on the same idea. Like we're still, you know, RB, I think 2.8 maybe. But, you know, different split or different kind of hard setup from the Admix GTR. Beautiful carbon. Love that huge check weave, whatever the word for it is. Carbon bumper. Massive canards. This one's got Ross crank sensor on it. Throttle body looks to be another Bosch throttle, throttle body. Huge search thing. Beautifully made, it looks like. I was really looking forward to seeing this one in person. It's another like full on top of the line build. And <laughs> he posted this on like his birthday. His birthday present to himself was that crazy steering wheel. But yeah, paddle shifted. You don't see a trans lever down there in the middle. Out back you got like Nismo, lower control arms, you know, standard aftermarket links it looks like. It's really cool to see the attainable stuff on such a wild aero car. Huge wing. And here's an idea, I don't know the technical term, but you see it on the Escort Evo as well. That like shark fin, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, look at this like double element wing, but it's like a mid a mid height element as well. Diffuser game strong.
our Yamamiya, some FD goodness here. Huge T with a T88, it looks like. Otherwise, not, I mean, not looking crazy wild, just what you need. Grex Alcon brakes, that's cool. Gretty working with Alcon. Like Sard fuel wheel tucked in there. Love the love the wing on this one. Really good FD setup. No underhood action, but still the Auto Rescue FD, another beautiful FD build. Plenty of width, all the canards, massive wing. Three point strut bar setup on this GR86 by carving. This one being completely stripped out, carbon doors. Lightweight is what you need. And like a neat carbon airbox up front. I'm really, really falling in love with the GR86, man. It is such a good looking car. This isn't the one we saw at Seven's Day, right? I think we saw the B-Craft FD, also red, at Seven's Day. It's around here too, but just I love everyone's original interpretation on Arrow for, I guess, whatever the chassis is. There's just multiple FDs, so you see everyone's own take on what's going to be the winning package. Really striking. Oh, car's coming down. Look at those risers on the wing. They look to be... God, they look like they could almost be plastic, but I think they're anodized machine aluminum, but they just have a very, uh, I don't know, like a soft finish on them. Beautiful car. In the wheel well, it's just for some endless prawn. Big old endless brakes, front and rear, and it's cool to see like a new style endless, but it looks old font style. Maybe you know what I mean. And a window delete. Save the weight. The more events I attend, the more I start to really enjoy R35 GTRs and appreciate kind of like you can have both, you know, best of both worlds. Full interior, ton of power, quote unquote automatic transmission and still rip it on the track and cruise in comfort. Nismo package here, bunch of carbon on it, but I mean, take your pick. You can do it any way you want. Here we are, the time attack car you didn't know you needed to see. Four door R34. So, yeah, big sedan skyline. Headlight deletes. Big splitter. Wide body. And, I mean, I'll put the lap time in here. But this thing's best time was like, I think it came into the event with like a 58 or a one minute or something like that. Like, big body's moving. And there you go, Shaft Auto Service, building the car, supporting the car. That's really a very attractive navy deep blue to it. You don't see many navy cars. Black Carbon FD, it looks like Wacky Mate, but this is Funny Bone. I just thought they were similar sounding words. Wacky Mate is... Wacky Mate is right over there. Front bumper is like so functionally clean and tidy. Such a beautiful setup, and they were getting laps in again. At Suzuka, man, they were getting in laps. Here, I think they ran the free soco too. They do some laps. I don't know if it's just all trying to dial the car in and having problems or or what, but notably, Wacky Mate getting laps. The paper thin carbon hood on this and the FD straight across the way, we just looked at the funny bone one. FD dudes, correct me if I'm wrong, but are those burnout rear over fenders? 
I remember those came out, but I thought they were so sick. I'm gonna say it right this time. Here is the same one via we saw at Suzuka. This thing is a monster. It sounded like, I think the announcer said it had some trouble maybe in its first outing of the day. Which is unfortunate. Again, they got <laughs> those awesome wheel lifts, tire lifts. But on the underside, that is definitely not a Nissan subframe. Look at that thing. With the custom adjustable anti-roll bar, A-arm lowers. It's been converted into proper double wishbone rear suspension. Full custom like box steel subframe and framing. Flat bottom-ish setup as well. Really neat. And of course, amazing carbon work and the widest of wide body. Mega risers on the G2 wing. More carbon on the trunk. And note that the trunk, the trunk is just integrated all the way out, hanging over the rear. Another look at the, from under, another look at the one, one via from the rear. I had to catch myself on that one, I almost said Onivia again. And engine wise, they got piping off off the throttle body. It looks like S14 or 15 SR, a big Garrett. Otherwise, you know, like not reinventing the wheel up there. Definitely are on the suspension side. Front suspension still keeping stock layout. And haven't gone double <laughs> wishbone up front. The splitter wrapping up into the wheel well. It supports on it. Without exaggerating, that is... The top edge of that fender is bigger than a monster energy drink can. An American sized one. Like that's sticking out eight inches from the top at least. The rear is well equally wide, but look at that beautifully like integrated <laughs> design flare. I love that thing. Ah, oh, there we go. Here's the dodo. Had to go. We've seen it a bunch, but it's still fun every time. The headlights are still on though. Probably not many changes from a week or two ago at Suzuka. I mean, for real, check out this paddock. Like, people came to this event and people are looking at the cars and stuff. Like, this is really cool to see, like, such a happening event. Oh, the Friends Racing S15 tucked in the back here. Man, such a look. Beautiful, beautiful car. Friends Racing S15. I don't, I mean, the tires are warming up. I don't know if it's running today. I don't know if I saw it in the morning session or not, but beautiful, beautiful car. I love the livery. Simple, but very aggressive and cool. And some Honda goodness from the Honda guys. They're growing on the channel. It's amazing. It's had some drift content. Now I got some Honda content. We got, I think there's both people. We'll see, but definitely more Honda guys coming on the channel. That is neat. Love that header. Maybe someone can identify that. Individual throttle bodies into a B18C, the block says. Hot sport mounts. This is the like <laughs> final, final form engine setup. Like, I don't know what's beyond this. This is amazing though. Love that. Love that header, you can see how it just kind of rises up before shooting straight down four into one. Wide body. Clean aftermarket front bumper. It has like a OEM resemblance to it, which is pretty cool. But yeah, two 95-35-18s up front on spoon brakes, but that's a massive tire for a Civic. Uh, no skirts on at the moment. An SSR Type C on the rear with a 225-45-16, so do an 18-16 stagger on it. And a massive, massive tunnel diffuser. Dashboard on the Yellow Factory EK9. 
Motec display, a C127 carbon dash. You cool. Ricardo, check yellow. Kevlar looking seat. Not much to say about the It's just like a beautifully, could be a stock street driven car. I mean, it's, it's registered, but you know, you just don't need to go wild to have a good time. It's the main thing. And um, for my S14 guys, your boy included, beautiful Koki. Car modified wonder rear overs, car modified oh, front fenders, car modified front bumper as well. Cool to see it in a time attack fashion with a big splitter on it. Tire warmers are on and a huge GT wing. Oh, maybe sequential gearbox down there? Not sure, stripped out as stripped out can be. Motec display, not much in back. Radium tank in the passenger seat. Huge cut rear bumper with the exhaust. Not only center mounted, but all the way up. Custom titanium exhaust. That is really good looking. And it looks like it's been plated off above that as well. So all about the airflow exiting. And hey, there you go. Attack Maximum Challenge Edition tire warmers. There we go. And one for the Zinke guys. A car after my own heart. We got Navan front bumper. And this is... There you go. Shodin. Shodin front lip. Which is somewhat unknown, but... I mean, it's not really well-known front lip. I think it's pretty cool. This has an additional <laughs> splitter. Looks like Car Shop Glow splitter on, in addition to that. Good old SR with HKS turbo, maybe 3037-ish. Not wild, just what you need, you know? Little f extra fender flares, maybe D-Max rear flare, or rear wide body. Nice wide mount GT wing, TE 37s. Ah, uh, those are Eurus side steps, I believe. Yeah, I'm running Valinos. And OEM Navan rear spats. What a cool aero mashup. So that is parked right next to. I believe this is the what, SSK Hachimaru Supra we saw at Attack Suzuka. I love functional Supras. Like on the street, if you see a stock one on like stockish type wheels, I'm sorry, but they look like blobby and really heavy proportion. But like aero and at the track, such a cool look. And it's, of course, it's cool to see the the bonnet that was made famous in Fast and the Furious on it. But really, really neat. So there's the A80 Supra, the SSK A80 Supra from Suzuka. And I got some chips. <laughs> uh, and he said he subscribed to the channel, so that's super cool. But yeah, I got those I watched that. Story of the times, really. Like, he's got an A80 Supra, he's got a G40 on it. He's like, if I cranked it up, it could make like 900 maybe. But he's keeping it at like 600 ish because he's got the V160. And if the V160 get drag mission blows, <laughs> it's like $10,000 these days. Um, I don't know how rebuildable they are or anything like that, but yeah, he just said like, well, we're just being nice to the transmission as long as we can because it's uh, the original transmission. But yeah, the engine had like pistons and stuff like that in it. Yeah, it's just funny to hear the, the, the transmission and, and keeping it alive was the limiting factor of the car. There we go, Garage Rise Up EK9. PCI rear risers, spoiler mounts, maybe PCI wing, or they added their own, and a rear window carbon delete, carbon hatch, all the carbon. Center exit titanium exhaust. Uh, and I should know the white body, but it looks like Rocket Bunny-ish, but I'm gonna be wrong, so tell me in the comments. Or it looks like it could be like an MM Honda style look, but I don't know if they made EK9 arrow. Anyway, you get the idea. A 24K spring. And just, you know, showing how simple you can keep it. Here's some, it says Inte. So these are like, look like junkyard Integra Type R maybe. 
uh, rear calipers because it's five lug. And he's got his little upper links, camber links there. And the trailing arm bushing is maybe reinforced rubber. It looks thick all the way, but definitely not one spherical. And then down below on the lower arm, which is incredibly thin, I'm not sure what's happening there. And up front, the kind of like reinforcement structure for running a splitter that carries load. Huge AP brakes, and the splitter goes all the way back to the back of the engine. And a little K series poking through the valve cover there. And this is the, was it the N1380 RS or something along those lines? Anyway, it's got a super special edition Nismo 3.8 liter engine in it that used to be all factory and it might still be, but they've been developing the arrow. And this is just because I read the Narita dogfight blog. Like, I didn't talk to him. Give credit where credit's due. Narita Dogfights had a few good like write-ups on this car. It's really, I mean, just the idea behind it's really cool because it's quite fast for being stock, even though the stock is not really stock. It's Nismo and really, really rare. Beautiful weave bumper. N1 Racing. And I believe the fenders are in development with Sundome or Sun, Sundome. Sundome. You never know with Japanese. We'll be back to look at more of these cars, but I'm going to try and go get a different view over here. so many cool cars out like and such variety i mean if you like fds fds are probably the most common car here but such variety and like everyone says like drifting is you know you put your personality on it or whatever but like that's all for style like this is trying to be stylish and functional it feels like it's really neat <laughs> Here on the infield, we got some JDM ducks, a little crane, a little ducky guys, a duck hunter. Rock, rock, rock. How cool is that? The Dunlop tire bridge right there. Just so cool to be here in person and get to see how everything's laid out and experience it and really kind of like wrap your mind around it. Um, so many cool cars, so it's such a cool event. Like this is definitely the attack event of the year. Like it, it's crazy turnout. But yeah, who knew like you could just be this close to the track like on the infield when they open the paddocks up. But here we go, here we go, here we go. Supra, Supra. Hopefully she'll turn around here in a second. Beautiful GTR there. She's got a pug. 
puck strapped to her chest. Beautiful GCR. Whoa, another beautiful GCR. Is that midnight purple? Woo. So cool to see these cars get used. 34 GTR. It's got the chop. Get some sound out of it. Looks like it's support support from the AT ATTKD. That's Autotech Sukata. I think it's such a cool logo, the ATTKD. But if you don't know what it is, you have no idea what it is. Anyway, appreciate some GTR. Admittedly, I don't know as much about Lancia Deltas as everyone else, but the internet always goes wild when they see one. And they have a very striking, very cool shape to them. And there's one that's kind of like near my house that it's just, it looks rad. But I have, I have no, no clue what they are and like anything about them. But this very like old school Euro heart wide body, like an E30 M3-ish, you know, like, but more. Really, really neat. Nice 180 again. It's a lapping day running in between the attack event. Uh, kind of, kind of, but yeah. You know, Roadster. Good old FD again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stock piping, maybe? Stock intercooler on the FD. Group M intake. Beautiful stock body. Don't need much more than that. And then, yeah, take your pick. Looks like E46 M3, MR2, E90? Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, yes, chassis. A grip 180. Looks like a large plywoodish uh, front splitter on a Koki type FRP front bumper, which might be. Memory's failing me now, but it might be like GT1, which is now sadly discontinued. Voltex, Voltex rear wing, and what everyone's gonna fap about some Nismo LM GT4s, I believe. I'm not as big a nerd about these as everyone else, but they go for stupid money these days. Beautiful car though, whatever that like purplish gray blue is, is very striking. Nice 32, this is a Type M I believe, not a GTR. But it's got a diesel sized turbo on it, like an S366 or something, I don't know, I'll have to ask him. Beautiful tower bar, maybe a 26 or cam covers on a 25. Nice color contrast with the wheels, splitter, 32R front bumper, and front fender conversion. And that's what's wild. To swap from a Type M front end, or GTSD front end, to a GTR front end on a BNR32, you have to switch every panel. It's all different. Even the corner lights are different, which you wouldn't think. might be my favorite car on the day. This Supra is really cool and it might be like the big FU stance up front. <laughs> like maybe it's running Wisepap, I don't know. Um, but it just looks so meaty and aggressive out on track and it sounds so good. Beautiful, like just function, you know? Function but good looks. And of course what Z40s. They never hurt, always a good look. Wow. <laughs> How do you got those eyeballs? What's the kid? There's no. Oh, geez. Okay. The dry sump, no radiator up front. That's a tight. I'm going to say tiny, but it's not. It's like maybe 35R ish size. 
uh, but you know, for a, a 2J, it could be bigger. Beautiful valve covers, huge search tank, looks like maybe a trust unit. Infinity Q45 throttle body with some like uh, TPS adapters, ATI super damper on there. Low mount oil cooler and intercooler, HKS blow off valve. Uh, I said it jokingly, but there's the blue arm down there. So yeah, it's on Wise Fab up front, which is why why it's got the Drifty Boy stance. But what a build, man. So we'll just start at the very back, but the inside does not disappoint. Look at that flat mounted ducted radiator. Again, like flat and low. Poyo rad rad. Uh, electric power steering tucked over there, perhaps. Fried bucket, only one. And look at this dash. Like carbon plates, like a steel tube frame with carbon plates. I have a cool take on a dash. Really simple, like, you know, put a dash bar in and then just put a plate on it and a little dimpled out for a center console. Sequential, no doubt. Holy cow, this car is legit. I'm going stalker cam on this one, straight through the rear hatch. Aim, dash there, data logger probably, and dash, still switch panel. Can't see an ECU, but yeah, sequential. Jeez Louise, this car is crazy. And a very, you know, chassis mounted rear GT wing with a trunk mounted GT wing. So wing game is strong on this guy. Wow, what a wild car. Wise Pat in the back. I don't know if this is like an X drift car or they're just really pushing weight as light and low as possible as they can. What a neat car. Carbon roof because, you know, at this point, why not? Exhaust going straight out of the hood, which is probably why it sounds so wild on the track. Grady Turbo Blanket, Garrett Turbo, Titanium Intake. And a radium fuel rail, ignition projects and coils. Yeah, just all the bells and whistles. Not diggity. Splitter looks to be of the plywood variety. Canards on point. And just pushing the air where you need it, not everywhere else. Pushing right into the intercooler, and the oil cooler is stacked right on top of that. So yeah, I said on the dyno pack, this thing made like 750. So he wasn't sure off top of his head what turbo's on it, but yeah. Uh, a cool, cool car. Might be my pick of the day. And I'm not a super guy. I think I've established that in this video. It's rad though. And just to wrap up this thought as, you know, Japan being Japan, we got A80 Supra, R34 GTR, FDR X7, and just for the, you know, the Japan factor, we have a Lancia Delta that was right there. Japan never fails to impress with variety. Split splitter. Definitely in some work here, but oh man. VE head S15. Looks like double flat coolers. We got intercooler on top, and then that aluminum sticking out down below in the black, I believe, is the radiator laid flat, it looks like. So I'm peeking through the shroud, but polar fans on top of the radiator pulling maybe air up through the ducting as well. Just guesses. External coils running over to the engine. All the wing right there. You gotta appreciate a wild S15. Such a capable chassis, like any form of motorsports. 
Excellent wheel selection with an excellent car. My goodness. Can't get enough FDs. You guys have seen a lot of them though. There's still more to go. Okay, I'll, I'll quick walk this one. No, don't know if I can. <laughs> now we got an FC. I love FCs. I love the DIY home center venting panel there. Corrugated plastic. If it works, it works and it's lightweight. A little wide body front and rear. Wide, wide wing. Love it. FDs still go for a lot of money as long as they have a title. FCs linger in the more affordable range. So that might be an option for a rotary shell when the time comes. I don't know. First love, I wouldn't hate it. And some S2K goodness. Really, really dig this arrow. Super wide. I like that front layout. Stock intake on the engine, stock airbox, the wide front and rear. Wing, wide mounted, stripped out interior. Once again, proving how simple you can run S2Ks, even with stock brakes, just upgraded pads and such. And yeah. That's all there is to it. What's your pick? Evo 4.5 or 8 or 9? Is that 5 or 6? Anyway, wide and aggressive. There we go, another strong case for FCs right there. So many cars, not enough time. I like those over the wheel blipped over fender additions. A little ducted box going out the hood. The turbo is internally gated, but can't really discern anything else. Just interesting that there's an internal gate on it. Again, that's the thing, man. Carbon window deletes are the it thing here. Red looks good, though. And if FDs are your pick, we got more. The B craft section here. Beautiful cars. Outstanding engine bay. This one, we for sure, man, we for sure saw this one at Sevens Day, right? Excellent setup. Twin Turbo Smart blow off valves. HPI filter on a Garrett Turbo, probably GCG, but you know, Garrett Turbo. And then that, yeah, Elite intake manifold. Just a lot, a lot of bits on that engine. And the green, green with the like off white, green tinted white is kind of a cool look as well. They're moving fast while it's hot. They got the wheels out of the van where they've been kept warm in their covers. And this car is in the under 29, so, you know, 29 years old or younger group, which I don't really understand. I guess maybe experience being the limiting factor in that group, but. It's interesting that there's an under 29 group. Amazing car though. Teamwork makes the dream work. As they say, you can see how many people are on this car making it happen as fast as they can to keep those tires warm as they can. Air temps right now, it's maybe 40. It definitely feels much warmer than it did this morning to start the day. But yeah, the pits are just amazing. I've said it a few times, but the pits of these style events are just rolling car shows. Like, it's all the cars you love in such variety but being used. And like, really express that to people. You know, you go to a drift event, you're gonna see the same three or four chassis. But something like this, it's just wild variety. Very, very well done in, you know, like an extreme fashion. Another 180SX, this time with the like Rocket Bunny on uh, Ikea Formula Arrow. <laughs> I believe that is the mashup I am seeing. But yeah, the, the bumper fits this application so well with the uh, headlights. Maybe Abflug, what's the, what's the headlights S chassis guys? Nice splitter, you can see the wood core or just cord of some sort. 
wrapped in carbon. Oh, is this Koguchi Power hood? That looks really familiar. Beautiful as well. Oh yeah, there you go, Koguchi Power front fenders. Such a subtle touch if you can pick it up in the light. It's laid into the fenders there. Koguchi Power. TEs. Carbon doors, like the good stuff. Like so many style points, so many nerd parts. Love every minute of it. Yeah, another FD. This one looking a little different. Different, different white body on it. What a pair. Engine was sounding weird right as it went in front of us. That was it. It was one shot. One shot this morning, one shot right now. Perspective, there's the Jim Conajo over there. And we're right off of the inside hairpin here. And then right over there is Scuba 1000. And we're on the Scuba 2000 full circuit. <laughs> 
Spotless OEM Fresh S2K. Well, ASM throttle spacer, Mugen intake with Samco intake pipe ish thing, you know, Setrap oil cooler. And Kamakama Chameleon paint. Kazama Auto. It's a VR38 powered RCF. Kind of a wild build to see it, you know, like time attack ish. But it seems like they're making a push into time attack as well. Definitely stylish or aggressive, whatever you want to call the arrow. It's good. Another A80 Supra. Soccer cam from above. And some work done, and if that's laying on the ground, something's something's not good. Hopefully, get it wrapped up. One of the faster cars here today. This is the surprise car here. I think it's a what, GC8 wagon. So whatever that chassis code is, but yeah, a Impreza wagon, but you know, like the older GC8 variety. <laughs> You wouldn't believe the sound and the smell from the auto rescue FT warming up behind me. 
180SX found it tucked away over here. Excellent 180S chassis build. Some good 180 action here today. This one probably the most extreme, maybe in terms of like custom arrow and such. And how about this guy? How good is it to see a CRX out here? Maybe the only Honda that's permissible to run an aftermarket front bumper. <laughs> Every other model, people always put OEM arrow on, but CRXs get away with the aftermarket arrow. Five lug front, four lug still on the rear. So cool to see one of these being loved and used. Happy to make this event my first time at Scuba. Like, Time Attack is what Scuba is kind of known for, so to make 
the biggest time attack event of the year, my first event to attend at Scuba. It's really, really cool. Kind of really special. Pictures of time attack cars from the pits of Scuba has been my like computer background for the past, I don't know how many years. Uh, so it's so cool to be here in person and actually get to like witness it firsthand. It's like the whole thing is so neat because, you know, get the layout, get the feel, really understand like what the track is about. It's just really cool to, you know, get a shot with the Dunlop Bridge right behind me. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Here comes the Friends Racing S15. You're gonna have to turn the camera. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Much love, be well.